Full tax bill that just passed. Yeah. Who likes it? Ooh. That is what I thought you would say. So today, uh, a number of different organizations got together. Uh, Indivisible Rochester, now Action Together Rochester, uh, Center for Disability Rights, a number of other organizations. Please remind me if I missed you uh, to put this together. And we're going to do uh, just in this order, roughly. Uh, the first thing I'd like to say is that there is space uh, down close to the stage for folks who uh, use a wheelchair and would like to be able to see, or for folks who just would like to be able to sit down because standing is too hard for them. So today, I'd like to, we also wanna thank our fabulous ASL interpreters. We want to thank uh, Mike Boucher, who lent us this wonderful sound system. And anybody else I need to thank, Amanda's going to tell me, and we'll make sure we're thanking them throughout the, the program today. So this is a bad tax bill. We are going to have some people talk to you about why it's bad and what harm it's going to cause. We are going to have people who are actually affected tell you about the harm it will cause to them or their communities. So I think without hearing me talk too much, because that is not why you came, I would turn the mic over first to Jacqueline Richard from now. Woo! Good afternoon, Rochester. I, I want to hear why you're here today. Are we happy? No. no. Are we going to stand for this? No. no. What are we going to do? So hopefully I'm going to give you some information. There's some fact sheets here, and I believe the instruction is if you take a picture with your phone um, on these fact sheets, then you'll know, know what to do in the next coming um, days or weeks. We are very fortunate that we have two senators from New York State, Schumer and Gillibrand, that are on our side. Yes. is not so uh, lucky or fortunate as we are. We are a big state, we make big noise, but to tell you the truth, we're going to be hurt by this bill like one of the most, New York, New Jersey, and California, and it's not fair. No. It's not fair because we're the ones that didn't vote for them, and that's why they're taking it out on us. We will not be treated this way, we will not be silent, and we will not let the rest of the country push us around because we know that each and every one of us is important. Yeah. Yes. Now that was off script, so excuse me, that was off script. I just can't help myself. Okay. My name is Jacqueline Richard and I'm the president, the proud president of Rochester Chapter of NOW. The National Organization for Women. NOW is the largest organization of feminist, grassroots activists in the United States, with hundreds of chapters and thousands of members and activists in all 50 states. At 1.51 a.m. on December 2nd, 2017, on a 51 to 49 party line vote, Senate Republicans passed their dangerous Trump tax scam bill. A blatant giveaway to corporations and billionaires at the expense of women, children, seniors, immigrants, poor people, small businesses, and many more. That means that 51 senators voted to raise your taxes, increase your health insurance premiums, that leaves 13 million more people uninsured and explode the deficit by more than one trillion. Yeah. Woo! This Trump tax scam bill is bad for a lot of reasons. Like the fact that it favors the wealthiest Americans over everyone else. That's terrible. Are they, are they working for us or are they working for them? But it's an attack on health care that would affect women and underserved communities the most. A measure in the Trump tax scam bill 
would end the Affordable Care Act's individual mandate, the measure that requires most people to sign up for health coverage. Without the mandate, insurance will likely become less affordable. With average premiums expected to rise by 10%, What's more, a projected 13 million people are estimated to lose coverage because of this move. Does that make any sense? No! For women in particular, the consequences could be grave. Nearly 9.5 million women gained health coverage thanks to the Affordable Care Act. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Bringing the number of uninsured women down by half the consequences, consequences for communities of color would be equally steep. Within black and Latino communities, the proportion lacking coverage fell also. We are in a war to save democracy. Yes, we are. Yes. The last war, I remember taking it to the streets during the Vietnam War. This war scares the poop out of me. <laughs> the Senate vote was a battle and the fight is not over. The Senate and the House still have to reconcile, reconcile their differences before the bill become, can become law. Touchy issues like the state and local tax deductions an individual mandate repeal could complicate conference negotiations. The Trump tax scam bill is a nightmare for women and families. This legislation cuts taxes for millionaires and billionaires on the backs of women, families, and low-income individuals. Don't be fooled and don't be silent. A little more that vote on December 12th, we have to pray that we can hold off the voting until at least we win Alabama. Yeah. <laughs> So we want you to take action. We want you to raise your voice now to stop this disastrous tax plan. Repeat after me. Stop the Trump tax scam bill. 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 Thank you. Introduce my Brighton Town Supervisor, Bill Maley. The man who is everywhere all the time. He yes. represents all of us. It's so good to see so many people out here, so many people who care about what's going on in our country, so many who care about the future of our country. This stuff matters, and you just heard Jacqueline tell you why. This is a process, it goes on. And I know you're going to hear uh, a number of people today. You know, some people ask me, "Why are you here? What? You know, why? Why bother? Isn't it over? It's not over. It's not over. And you know, regardless of what happens with reconciliation and everything else, it's not over. And we're going to talk about that a little more. But let me first talk a little bit about terminology and framing, because I hear some people talk about tax reform. Now, let's be very clear. This is not tax reform. There is nothing about this legislation that has anything to do with reform. Reform involves bipartisan, people working together, people of good heart, good mind, working together to try to do what's best for the country. Reform means public hearings, letting some sunlight into the room. None of that, none of that is happening here. Two in the morning, think about that. Two in the morning they had to hide this thing. Process matters. Now let's talk a little bit about tax policy because policy has always been an important part of the tax code. You look at the tax code and you see many things that would advance policies that matter to all of us. Deductions for student loans. Education has always been the great equalizer in America. People, people from uh, all levels, but particularly new, you know, immigrant families, first generation families, uh, families of limited means have used student loans 
as a way to get their piece of the American dream. Mortgage and tax deductions, home ownership, so important to the future of the country. People move up um, in their economic standing through home ownership. The tax code encourages that. The tax code encourages student loans. The tax code encourages all sorts of things. Now remember, it does both work both ways. You know, you've had oil drilling allowances and things like that. But what is very clear is that tax policy matters. Yeah. Estate taxes. If, if, if any of you want to know the clearest sign that this tax bill is a give back to the rich, look at the estate tax provisions. Doubling the exemption for state taxes. Now less than one-tenth of one percent of all estates pay federal income taxes now, but that's still too many for them. So they're going to cut it back even more to give the very wealthy in this country yet another benefit from this tax bill. Policy matters. Process matters. Now, we're here in Rochester. This tax bill hurts this region. Tom Reed, are you listening to us? You know, Tom Reed used to represent a big chunk of Monroe County. He used to represent a big chunk of Brighton. 40% of taxpayers in Monroe County itemized deductions. 30% nationwide. Monroe County taxpayers, 37% of them itemize local property taxes. Almost the same number itemize state income taxes. Now these tax bills aren't quite the same on this. And of course, again, we talked about reconciliation. But those provisions that limit or eliminate the deduction for state and local uh, taxes, local uh, property taxes, state income taxes, will hurt the middle class in Monroe County disproportionately. When you're talking 37%, you're, not talk you're talking the middle class. And they're the ones that are getting hurt in this region. This will hurt housing prices. You know, this is really not a partisan thing. E.J. McMahon um, from the um, the Empire uh, 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 conservative think tank in uh, in Albany, the Empire. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. Oh, not Empire Justice. It's a conservative think tank. But even he has estimated that these tax provisions could cause home prices in upstate New York to fall by as much as 20%. The middle class, again, is the target of this legislation. Those are just a few of the examples, but here's a few more. Historic tax credits. We're surrounded by beautiful historic properties here, some of which, and throughout the city, some of which have been restored only because of the historic tax credit. Older cities, like the cities in upstate New York, use the historic tax credit. Historic tax credit, bye-bye. Cities, bye-bye. Student loans. Uh, some of you may have heard me on uh, Evan Dawson uh, Thursday. I, it, was, it was just a wonderful opportunity to be on, uh, on his show with a couple of uh, PhD uh, students from the U of R who will personally be hurt by this bill. Education is so important to this region. Look at one of the reasons that, you know, that, that we are such a strong contender potentially for an Amazon headquarters. Because we have such a highly educated workforce here. The U of R, MCC, RIT, those students are going to be impacted tremendously if this tax bill passes. Education matters. Yes, it does. Charity. You know, changing these laws, changing these rules, you know, they say, oh, it's not going to be so bad. They're going to double the standard deduction. Well, the right hand, and I mean the right hand, <laughs> give it. And then it takes away. It takes away the personal exemption. It takes away 
um, some of the benefits of head of household tax rates. And when they take away that personal exemption, remember those policies? Remember the things like student loans that they take away? Those deductions? Even, if the, even for the deductions that are good policy that stay, they increase the standard deduction, so most people won't be able to itemize anymore, and then they take away those personal exemptions. Charity. Yes. The devil's in the details. If that phrase ever meant anything, it does when you read this tax bill. And believe me, the devil is in the details. So what are we going to do? You're going to hear people. We're going to fight this. Reconciliation still goes on. Our voices matter. Having people in office, like Howard Mafucci over here, Howard Mafucci, the next county legislator, from the Mafucci seat on the east side of the county, like Robin Wilt, our next town board member in the town of Brighton. So we got to work on reconciliation, but people like Howard, people like Robin, show that we got to be out on the streets through 2018 making sure that we elect people that understand that the middle class so we're out on the streets we're electing people we're working 2018 2019 for local elections the big kahuna in 2020 because elections matter. let's get it done everybody thank you so much